Gun rear! Hi everybody, I'm Tim Bulot and welcome to WeaponsAcademy.com. Another episode, we are in week 10 of ammo shortage. Now we're coming at you with a little bit late because we're, we're in the Memorial Day weekend and uh, respects to uh, all those who gave their lives serving this country. Um, we've been busy with classes as well, so and we've had some weather issues, uh, so we're a couple days behind, so bear with us there. So a couple announcements as we get into it here. So when we started this series, we started it under the premise that we were training in an ammo shortage, and we're 10 weeks into it. We've given you, with this episode, 10 pretty good episodes, and the situation with ammo has improved. Uh, 9mm is readily available in the stores, still a little hard to find in the box houses right now, but 223 seems to be be in an abundance also so what we're going to do from this point on is we're just going to transition back into our our regular episodes but we're going to train on the premise that we're not in an ammo shortage anymore so we're going to keep coming at you with good good program good video good content here but we're going to go ahead and call it an end to the ammo shortage series for now anyway and if that changes we'll bring it back so i'm going to really encourage you to if you haven't seen all of the episodes go back and let them look at all of them you got 10 really good uh, episodes in this series here of of, of how to really fine-tune your fundamentals uh, you utilizing the minimum amount of ammo necessary and and including a lot of things that you can do without ammo whatsoever, uh, such as dry fire exercises and some outstanding tactical med medical training uh, in there as well. So uh, it's been a fun series, but uh, and we're not going away. We're just going to continue on with uh, regular training. So episode 10, this week we're going to talk about turning and shooting. So in this episode, we're going to we're going to kind of drop in on a live class that we did here in the last week. And in this session, I'm going to discuss turning and shooting, why we need to turn and shoot, uh, some basic fundamentals that are involved in turning and shooting, and, and most of all, how to do it safely. So let's go to the classroom and sit in on the lecture for a minute. And then from the lecture, we'll go out to the range. And today, we're going to work on turning and shooting. Okay, so let's talk about turns, all right? So... Turning and shooting is something that we would apply when our threat is not always to the front. So when we're out here on the range, we're constantly shooting a target that's straight in front of us. But out in the real world, it very well may be to the left, to the right. It may be at a 45 or an angle in between, maybe behind us, okay? So when we, um, when we get into some of these other classes, like how many of y'all are coming to active shooter, tactical response active shooter? Yeah, you're going you're, you're gonna to have to use this in that class because you know dealing with you know you got a threat to the front and another one to the right clearing rooms okay and get back in the shoot house and do some work back there you're going to have to high risk we use a lot of this in high risk tactics because we'll be start with one man clearing okay and, and you got to turn to go from corner to corner so the reasons the reasons are, are there's abundance of reasons on why you may need to turn and shoot and it's it's not good enough just to do it any old way just like everything else we do there's there's a method to it okay and we want to take as few as steps as possible, right? Or you'll end up taking, you can, you can do it in one step or you can do it in three or four steps. So we're going to go with the uh, shorter version first, okay? So we're looking at gun left, gun right, and gun rear. And those are the range commands we'll actually use. If the target is to your right and I call threat, that is a gun, gun right or contact right. That's what you'll call out because you want your teammates to know what the situation is, the threat and the direction thereof, okay? So the steps we're going to use, especially while learning, the static steps are look, step, and punch, okay? So if I have a target to my right, it's look, step, and punch. It's not look, punch, and step, because what does that do? Yeah, I mean, is there directional harmony in that? No. Is it unsafe? Yes. Okay, so as I step and punch, I'm driving into that target. Just like I were delivering a, a punch with my hand. It's the same thing, okay? So the muzzle stays down or in the holster until your chest is facing your threat. When we demonst demonstrate that, you're going to see me driving into that target, especially, especially on a range. If I come up early on the range, I'm going to flag legs, hips, feet, whatever. It's not acceptable, okay? Because we can train ourselves to do it a different way, okay? So look, step, and punch, all right? Now, we don't want to step backwards, I mean, because I can look, step, 
and punch. Is that not the same three steps? What's some of the problems with stepping backwards? Okay, what if Terry come on up? What if we're working a two-man technique and, and Terry's my partner behind, okay, say you're trailing on me, Terry, and I step back, I just stepped into him. Or if we're moving this way, say like we're, going, we're clearing this hall, and I step back like so, I just cut him off. Where by stepping forward, I can allow him to flow past me, okay, and continue on. So there's an abundance of reasons why we don't want to step back. Okay, now in some of the houses we've cleared out in, in SWAT, you know, we're talking dope houses that are small, they're cluttered, there's junk everywhere. I mean, every conceivable space in the house is full of something. So if you go stepping in an area unknown, there's no telling what you're going to step on. It could be anything from dog shit to a roller skate, kids roller skate or something like that. I'm serious. It's that bad. So you want to step in the known direction towards a threat for an abundance of reasons. Now, if you do it and you get away with it, that's, that, that's fine. It's over. It's done. But we're going to train you to do it the, the proper way. Okay? Once again, don't unholster or don't draw until you're facing your threat. Same way with Sewell. Don't come out of school until your chest or your plates are towards your thread. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. Okay, because coming up early with that muzzle means somebody's going to get flat. Okay? On the concealed draw, okay, as I turn, I've got to sweep that jacket. Now, if I'm turning to the left and I sweep the jacket, which way does centrifugal force bring it? Brings it back, back around, right? So you've got to you've got to plan for that. You've got to clear it aggressively or turn, then clear it and then draw. So it's something you need to, for those of y'all that are work, working church security de details on, when you get home, practice this dry fire with a jacket on doing your turns so you get that clearing step in there because it's, it's adding an extra step or wherever you draw from. But if you're, but if you're doing it with a jacket and you, you're turning, you know, in, in my case, towards my left, it'll actually want to swing the jacket back around. So you've got to clear it twice as hard or, or break the t rhythm of the timing a little bit to where you step, clear, draw, and punch, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Just be careful with the laser rule number two. And we're going to go static first and then dynamic. And by static, I mean look, step, punch. I'm going to call the commands, and you're going to go in that order until everything is safe, okay? And um, lastly, when I do gun rear, okay, if I have a threat to my rear, I can turn to my right, so it would be look, step, and punch, okay? Or I can turn to my left, look, step, and punch, okay? Whichever way we go, I will call it. I will say your target is to your rear, you're going to turn to your right. When you, say, when you hear me tell you which direction to turn, I want you to look over so you can stay oriented in front of your target. Because if you don't, every time you return, you're going to just kind of waltz across the range, so to speak. So look over that right shoulder. That also lets me know that we're all on the same page. That this one's not going to turn left and that one's not going to turn right. Just for safety reasons. I don't want us, you know, we've got plenty of space out there, but you never know. Okay, so if it's to the rear, it's look, step, and punch. And I'm pivoting, so I'm pivoting on the bottom of this foot. On the ball in this case, you can do it on the heel for other reasons. If I got to keep it real tight, I can do it on the heel. But basically, I'm giving it off the ball, screwing myself down into the ground. But the weapon stays, look, step, and punch. So when I do this, from position Sewell, I'm staying in Sewell. Stand by, look, step, and punch. Okay, and we're gonna stick with that until we smooth that out, and we'll round the corners, and then we'll go dynamic with it, okay? Any questions on anything so far? Is everybody clear on the abundance of reasons on why we need to learn to turn and shoot? And I hopefully, hopefully we've given you a couple reasons on why it's not good enough to just do it any other way. This last technique I showed you, if I don't teach you a method, I mean, technically, how many steps am I taking here? Okay, now watch this. How many steps am I taking here? Four or five? Okay, so which way is going to get me into a stable shooting base faster? One. The first way, right? And, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. And, you know, if I, and a lot of times I'll see this coming around this way. Then again, if there was something behind me, I just hit it. Okay, so like I said, it's not good enough to just do it any old way. And actually, the way that we're doing it is the most economical. There's nothing complex about it whatsoever. It's very simple. Good enough? Okay, so let's watch the demo on the video. Let's get out there and go to practice.
Look. Step. Punch. Turn right. Target is to my left. Stand by. Look. Step. Punch. Out. Target is to my rear. Going to turn to the right. Stand by. Look. Step. Punch. Turn about. Target is to my rear. Going to turn to the left. Stand by. Look. Step. Punch. Contact right! Turn right, target to the left. Stand by, contact left! Turn about, target to the rear, turning right, turning right. Stand by, contact rear! Turn about, target to the rear, turning to the left. Stand by, contact rear! Stand by, look! Step! Punch! Stand! Now right there, just check your shooting stand. Are you in the same stance you've been using all day? You want to try to end up that way. And reholster. Shooters, face right, face right, hands in your peripheral, your target is to your left, to your left, stand by, look, step, good, wait, pastor, three holster, that hand on the chest, and punch, good. okay, position sold, okay, so, what this does is allows me to turn without flagging anybody if I do it correctly, right? Okay, so if I'm doing a gun right, it's the same look, step, and then punch. Okay, avoid this. Look, watch. Step and punch. What was wrong with that picture? Flag, 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 flag. What I had, what I had flagged my partner on the, on the range. Now people say, well, people get flagged in gunfights all the time. Does that mean we should practice to not flag? Yes. Yeah. Well, we should. Yes. Or should I say, does that mean we should not practice yeah, to not, not flag? Yeah, right. I mean, if I raise my weapon to cover a threat area, area, and I'm flagging somebody two blocks down the road, I mean, you're never gonna know, okay? I don't flag the people around me, all right? And they don't flag me either. So we're not gonna do it, all right? So I'm gonna unholster, position stool, face right. This is going to be a gun right. Stand by. Gun right. Okay, back to Sewell. Face left. Or face right. Target's to my left. To my left. Stand by. Gun left. Good. I'm going to turn about. Uh, you got to really watch it on this one. I'm going to go to my right. Turn to my right. Check my shoulder. Stand by, gun rear! Back to Sewell, turn about. I'm gonna go to my left, so I'm looking over. Stand by, gun rear! Okay, so what was the common denominator on those? I did not press oh, out yeah, until I'm when? Chest toward the threat. Yeah. That's gotta happen, okay? If you come up and you gotta watch it from Sewell, you gotta resist the urge to come up early because once again, okay, I'm driving into that threat. I'm driving into that threat, okay? Directional harmony, look, step, and punch. 
drive into it, especially when you're going from the rear. It's real easy to come up out in this area. That's a major, major flag right there. Good enough? No. All right, we're going to do it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, having a look at one of our classes in action there, turning and shooting, and what all is involved in that particular drill. Now, as you always hear me say, this is not everything there is to turning and shooting. We just took some of the more important aspects of it to include in this video. So however you choose to train it, just whatever you do, train it safely and adhere to those fundamentals as you continue to develop yourself as a shooter. Okay. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is going to wrap up our ammo shortage series for now. We're going to be coming back at you with regular content. We're going to train on the premise that there's not an ammo shortage. So y'all hang in there with us. We got a lot of really interesting and really fantastic stuff coming up here at Weapons Academy. We've got some more uh, Jeep Adventure videos coming up as well for those of y'all that enjoy that. But as always, we're going to continue to bring uh, self-defense content to you, both live fire on the range, some things you can do at home, and some self-defense skills involving empty hand tactics and possibly getting into a little bit of knife work, a little bit of stick work. So we're going to keep sprinkling a lot of these uh, concepts, theories, and principles in these episodes uh, as we go. So it's a, ammo shortage has been fun. Go back and review all the other ones, and I, I hope you've enjoyed it. But we've really enjoyed putting this on for you. So y'all take care, and we'll see you on the next episode here at WeaponsAcademy.com.